lots of questions about um, why do you collect knives? Uh, what's a good knife to invest in, or what what type of knives will be of a good a good investment for later on in life if I want to sell my collection? Um, which knives are the best steel? Which knives are the best for users, etc., etc.? Um, I've had comments such as, "Boy, you must be broke because you're buying all these knives." Um, well, collecting for me is. It's very important for me to know that I'm not putting my family and myself in financial jeopardy to collect the different things I collect. And this is one of five rolls I have of knives. I grabbed this one because I wanted to dis specifically discuss the Tony Bow series and a lot of the case trappers I have. And I also wanted to go into the Bulldog series. So this knife roll was absolutely perfect. It had these in it. Um, I also wanted to sp speak about some tactical blades I have, <clears throat> whether they're Automatics or Spyderco, which is a very nice brand, um, and, and or some Benchmades. Um, and I wanted to discuss basically why I collect and my theory on collecting. All right. <clears throat> well, why I collect? I like knives. I like to look at them, I like to collect them, I like to clean them, I like to trade them, um, I like the history on them, I like the story that they have to tell. <clears throat> it's a small piece of history that um, tells a lot about the time that they were produced. Um, it tells a lot about the companies, uh, our economy, and all kinds of neat things, and I enjoy, I enjoy that. Each knife has a story to it, and I think that's pretty cool. Um, my collection isn't like a DVD collection. <clears throat> I don't go out and buy a $22 DVD and, uh, you know, two years from now that DVD is going to be worth a dollar. My knives, knives have typically always increased in value. Always. Um, and especially the older type. Um, it, you can look throughout history and a lot of the knife clubs will do that. They have, uh, the knife knives of the year that they produce for their club and it's amazing to see how much the knife club sold that particular knife for and what that particular knife is worth now and for investment purposes I don't think knives can be really beat um, for much of anything um, the only thing that has really affected collections such as comic books or stamps has been eBay and and it really affected the comic book uh, collecting because it, comic books used to be worth an awful lot of money and they still are but not quite as much as they used to be and that's due to the fact that eBay basically made comic books that were virtually impossible to locate it made it where you could locate these particular comic books within seconds um, <clears throat> the thing about knives is each one of them is handmade so they're all different even the ones that are factory built, you have different qualities of stag that goes into the handles. That's why stag, stag is very popular and that's because each one has its own character and, and the desirability of stag makes it where the, the, the stag knives, one knife might go for $300 and the next knife might go for $250 just for the simple fact that the stag on a particular model looks better. So. Uh, so to answer your question, no, my collecting has actually made me money and almost all the knives that you see, um, according to my books, has cost me nothing. Um, I don't pay my mortgage with my uh, knife collecting. I reinvest in the hobby itself. So what you see basically at this moment most of my knives at this time have cost me nothing and that's because I do purchase large amounts of particular knives and resell them and then reinvest in the particular knife knives that I like for investment purposes like the case older case knives a lot of the bulldog brands I, I like uh, lots of Robinson I've got uh, keen cutters keen cutters are wonderful old knives to invest in but I also enjoy the um, the custom made knives, <clears throat> and but they're not that good of an investment because custom made knives, number one, a knife such as this that I'm that, we're, that I'm holding up, 
That's a $400 knife. I purchased it for $400. It's worth 400 bucks. And it probably 10 years from now, it will be worth probably 400 bucks. It might increase in value a little bit, but I don't think it's really going to be a drastic wow. Oh my gosh, I'm glad I bought that. It's more for my collecting, just for my, it's for me. I enjoy that. That's a present to me. Um, so without further ado, um, let me show you some books that really gauge, in my opinion, um, the knife market. And the first book I'm going to show you is, <clears throat> this is James Parker, Pocket Knife Trader's Price Guide. And this has basically a list of different knives, um, case knives, different years and all that stuff. And it basically gives you a guide of how much they're worth. Now, a lot of people say, well, Parker, he's a jerk or whatever. There's a lot of history here. All right. um, I'm not really going to go into it. But I've been watching eBay for many years now. And typically, most of the knives will, will basically sell for exactly how much he put in this book. This book hits it right on. Now, whether or not you feel... A Hawkbill Redbone is worth $400, okay, or not. In this book, it is, and they sell for that much. Now, granted, I didn't purchase this one for that much. I purchased this one for $20 at a garage sale. All right, now how cool is that? Now, is that a good investment? I purchased something for $20 at a garage sale, and later, well, Remember, knowledge is everything. You like the white gloves? I thought that'd be kind of cool to bring out right now. Um, I purchased something for 20 bucks, and later I find out it's worth, you know, a couple, two, three hundred dollars. This is a Case XX. This is a really beautiful knife. Absolutely gorgeous. Now, how does that make you feel when you find something like that? Well, to say the least, when I was at the garage sale and the lady said, ah, how's 20 bucks sound? Uh, my heart went through my chest because I knew exactly what it was because um, after years of, of collecting, you basically know what knives are worth. Now, you have books like this that give you a number value. All right, and books like this really don't teach you much. You do have books that teach you an awful lot. And I will go into those right now. Uh, you have Blade's Guide to Knives and Their Values. This, this book really looks good. Pretty much worthless. Pretty much worthless. Not really, not really a highly respected book when it comes to a price guide. It really doesn't, in my opinion, doesn't really teach you very much. That is my opinion, by the way. Take it for what it is. <clears throat> you have uh, Sergeant's Pocket Guide. Um, it's not really a pocket guide. That's a pretty big pocket. But uh, this is a very good knife also. I mean, very good book also, excuse me. Um, I'm going to show you the two best books for price guides. Wham! This is Levin's Guide to Knives. And it's the fourth edition. The fourth edition, you can get the first edition, the second edition, fifth edition, sixth edition, whatever edition you want. And you're looking at 20, 30 bucks. But the fourth edition, this I've seen this book itself. Now I purchased this book for $15 off an auction site, but I could resell this this book for almost probably over a hundred bucks on eBay. And the reason why is because this book teaches you everything about knives and not only that it teaches you how to gauge the value of almost any knife in the world it, it it's a wonderful guide you have to get into it it goes into a lot of stuff and not only that it does have values next to different types of knives but even if you cannot find your particular knife in this book it has I'm not it's I'm not going to explain it but it basically breaks it down on how you can gauge the value of any knife, regardless of whether it's in this actual book or not. And it's a fantastic book. I, I cannot even tell you how great of a book this is. Fantastic. And <clears throat> this is Goins Encyclopedia of Cutlery 
and markings. Markings. This is a great book. Because have you ever gotten one of those knives and you look at the Tang stamp and you say, what the heck is that? When was it made? What is it? This book goes into that. All this book is, is Tang stamps. And it goes over exactly what's printed on the Tang stamp of the knife and it gives you when it was made and a little history on it. Great knife to narrow down your search for a particular knife. Because that's what the neat thing about knives is you'll pick them up and you'll be like, what the heck is this? You take it home and you look it up and you're like, this is, this is neat. You get a little history on it, where it was made, who made it, small companies, large companies, New, in New York, etc., cetera, et cetera. These are This is a very good book. <clears throat> and you also have specialty books like King Cutter Pocket Knives. This is all about old King Cutter Pocket Knives. And I have an awful lot of King Cutter Pocket Knives. I have about a roll and a half of all old King Cutter Knives that are close to over 100 years old. And those are fantastic knives. So, that's a big mouthful. Um, so a lot of people are like, well, <clears throat> I have a bunch of tactical knives. Now tactical knives typically do not increase in value as much as the older knives. Why? Well, they're not really of limited quantity. They're mass produced, but some of them will go up in value slightly. But you're not really gonna find a knife like this, like this Spyderco, okay, at a garage sale for 20 bucks because Functional wise, it's a beautiful knife and it'll probably sell for maybe 50 bucks or 60 bucks, but it'll probably be well used at that point and it won't be worth what it's really worth, which is about 100 bucks. I purchased the tactical knives to use them. Um, this particular knife is special to me because my mom bought it for me. But in general, knives do not really increase in value. Now, due to the fact that I am military, I can purchase uh, autos, thus making it well illegal for me to do that, but to, I can sell it to other people that cannot readily access them um, for maybe an increased price. And that's why a lot of autos are too expensive, because the websites that are selling them to you, they know they shouldn't be selling them to you, and they're charging you for that. Um, so... Take that for what that is. Um, well, you have this Rockstead knife. I have a whole video on this knife. <clears throat> this knife retails for about fifteen hundred dollars. You know, but for an investment purpose, you're like, is this knife worth fifteen hundred bucks? Does it really matter? I can sell it for fifteen hundred bucks. So, does it make it worth fifteen hundred bucks? I would say it makes it worth fifteen hundred bucks if I can sell it for fifteen hundred bucks. But I didn't pay fifteen hundred bucks for it. I paid about 60% of that, which is about uh, $400. I purchased this one for $400 because, and if you can do the research on that, obviously someone at the time purchased this when <clears throat> he had a lot of money to spare and he needed money quickly and sold this at a reduced price, a drastically reduced price. Now I could put this up for sale and get $1,500 on it. I just made a 60% profit on my purchase. Is that a good investment? Yeah. You tell me one thing in the market today that can do that. Tell me one investment. I would like to know it because if, if you know something, I don't. Um, even gas prices don't go up that fast. <clears throat> so knives you can make money on and that's what I enjoy. A lot of people are like, well, you should, everything's not about money. Well, it is when you have a family. Um, it's not my job to, to you know, buy a bunch of garbage and <clears throat> say, sorry, honey, I can't afford to send you to college. So that, that's just my take on it. <clears throat> um, but a lot of these knives I did purchase at reduced prices. I find them. Someone doesn't know the value of them, and I'm not going to sit there and explain to them. Knowledge is power. I will pay a fair price for it, and in turn, it's it's a win-win for me. Um, good example of that. Let me see here. Uh, these case trappers, they're worth about $300. I purchased these for $50 a piece. Got a whole bunch of them. Um, so that, you know, 
that's the fun of it. It's it's like an Easter egg hunt or something where you're looking for you you know what the values of knives are, and it's it's like an Easter egg hunt to find which knives are valuable and which ones aren't. Um, a lot of these Tony Bowes knives I got at reduced prices. Same thing. Someone purchased them at the full retail price, <clears throat> had money at the time, needed to sell them, and I turned around and purchased these for 150. 150 dollars for a Tony Bowes. That's pretty good. And I throw that up on eBay. <clears throat> I could probably sell that for about 275, 300 now. That's a 40 percent profit. But I mean, am I really? Do I need the money now? No. Do, do I, I? Would I rather, for me, for 150 dollars, would I rather keep that in my collection? I'd rather keep that in my collection. I enjoy it. That's the whole point of having a collection: is enjoying your collection. Something to pass the time before you die, you know. <clears throat> so. For me, I, I enjoy the older knives. Collecting them, I find that they're easier to find at a at a cheaper, reduced price at garage sales and the places that I frequent. Um, and then in turn, it builds my collection up. And if, if it's a knife that I really don't care for, I will usually resell it on eBay or I'll resell it to another individual <clears throat> and make a profit and invest in knives that I care about keeping in my collection. All right. Um, oh, and by the way, I just would like to say I love case knives. Comment. Um, if you can see this, I'm sure you can see the difference between these two knives. Um, <clears throat> so if you if you basically have these books and you do the research, you'll know which one of these is worth more than the other. And and that's the cool thing. And they're both case XS, XX. Um, <clears throat> So, the, this knowing what the values of these knives, and and seeing them at garage sales or seeing that at pawn shop or whatever, um, knowing how to pick out one knife out of a group of 300 in a glass case, that is the skill that's going to basically build your collection up to something that you can be really proud of and something that eventually will um, or is a good investment piece for your collection. And you should always ensure your collection. You should always take pictures of everything, document it. I'm taking pictures of it right now and documenting it for the whole world to see. <clears throat> and that's really cool because uh, that way when so if something does happen or some thief wants to steal what's mine, <clears throat> um, I have uh, insurance um, proof of what I own and how much it's worth. So really cool. Um, I hope you enjoyed the video. It's really long, I know, and I hope that you guys understand um, where I'm coming from, and I hope that I explained knife and their values. Not to say that tactical blades are not great to collect. Fantastic. If that's what I'm saying, I'm not saying that you have to make money on anything. I'm not saying that at all because believe me, I'm not making any money or on a custom built knife. This is for me. I enjoy a four or $500 knife. I enjoy that. Um, that's Mammoth Ivory, by the way. Pretty cool, huh? Um, so there's nothing wrong with that. If that's, uh, It's not all about money, and, it, and life shouldn't be all about money. But for me, um, it is important for me to pay for my own uh, collection and make some profit out of it and that way I can feel a little bit better. It's kind of neat to say all these great knives are mine and they cost me really nothing because I've made a profit. And you always want to keep a, a ledger of how much you purchased something for and how much you've reselled it for or if you traded it, I traded it for this knife that's worth this or this or that or this. And that way you have an idea of the value of your collection. It's good for insurance uh, reasons and it's good for, I don't know, um, being able to send your kids to college later and not wasting what little cash that most of us have in this world. So, but I've got lots of tacticals. I got the uh, Benchmade here. Got great knives, fantastic users. I enjoy using these knives. Fantastic users. Um, ooh, here's a Japanese layered steel. Look at that. Mukasta. I can't even say that. I don't know. Anyway, um, cool stuff. Hope you enjoyed it. And that's all I got for y'all. Take it easy. Bye-bye.